All right, everyone, we are here and ready for round number one. Um, This is an interesting hand because we have a Siphoner into Liliana with so many three drops. I think this is a keep, although this could be a mulligan. Um, but I think we're going to keep it here. We have two draw sips to draw land. The amount of lands we have in our deck, we're roughly like 60-something percent to do so. If we miss a land for one turn, we still have a Glensleaf Siphoner, so we're okay. The land doesn't even necessarily have to be colorless, although that would, of course, be the best case scenario. If we draw something like an Aether Hub, we get to draw the first turn off Glensleaf Siphoner, so that's an added bonus here. And we're going to keep it moving, keep it 100. So, um, so yeah, so in, in the Sam in the Sandball universe, we got a 24-hour stream coming up. A lot of cool things, great emotes, lots of cool stuff on the Twitch channel. If you are a uh, Twitch connoisseur or someone who likes to watch Twitch, I definitely recommend checking it out. We're doing big things over there. So they seem to be playing a green-black deck. Uh, I think ultimating, ultimating Liliana is probably going to be like a great path to victory here. And with the Mattery Shapers basically being able to like block anything and get value, um, I think you know, trying our best here with a Liliana is close to where we want to be. All right, I'm going to give this some of that treatment, and I'm going to Thought Not Seer here. We could have Warping Whale to kill this, but we have that option at a later time, I suppose. Um, so Walking Ballista can kind of shut down our plan. Grasp and Fatal Push do not, although they are allowed to draw cards from those. So I think I'm going to take the Walking Ballista. I think that's the most dangerous card here. Like, if they play Aether Hub and Grasp us, that doesn't do anything. Um, they get to draw a card there, but there are Long Tusk Cubs still kind of in a hurting spot. And we have Mattery Shaper plus Warping Well next turn. So I'm just going to take a, a Walking Ballista here. I think that's their best card. I know they're going to use this Grass of Darkness on my Thought Knots here. Um, so maybe it was better. Take the other card. But if they keep pumping up Walking Ballista every turn, it's going to be, you know... At some point, they're going to be able to fire it off against Liliana, maybe? I don't know. Maybe that was bad. Again, still learning this deck. It seems fairly hard to play well, uh, but I'm trying my best. All right, Thought Not Seer again. Best draw off the top. Walking List of Tireless Tracker. All right, well, I guess now we'll take a Ballista. And, uh, yeah, I mean, our plan is to Mattery Shaper plus and then eventually be able to ultimate Liliana. That's our plan, right? So. Ooh, Fatal Push is excellent. But that means they can Fatal Push me back, so I have to save that. So I'm going to plus on the Tireless Tracker. I'm going to Mattery Shaper, and then uh, next turn we're going to ultimate Liliana. I mean, there's there's really no reason not to. We just get to make two zombies every turn, um, which is going to be pretty dangerous here. Even if they're drawing an extra card every turn, it's going to be kind of hard just to beat the zombie Onslaught. Um, what is this going to be? A Walking Ballista. So they just drew three of those. Wow. So they're actually going to be able to do some damage to the Lily here. They're going to be able to shut it down by two. Yep. And then I'm expecting incoming Fatal Push. Okay. Let's see if they move to attacks here. Uh, I'm, I am interested in Fatal Pushing back, by the way. So I am going to Fatal Push this tracker in response. Before they get the idea to play more lands and get more clues. Alright, so we're going to have Warping Whale plus Mattery Shaper. Um... So I imagine it's going to be, like, kind of hard for them to do anything. That being said, like, I guess this Liliana could always go get another Thought Knot Seer. We could just, like, keep recycling Thought Knot Seers against them. 
which also seems powerful. Maybe I'm, so I might be like too crazy about ultimating here. I don't know. Obviously, I think ultimating is good, uh, but other people might not feel that way. <laughs> I don't know. Again, this is only my uh, sixth match with the deck, so I am I, I by no means am claiming to be an expert here. I'm simply just trying my best. Wow, another tracker. Okay, Warping Wheel's not doing a lot here. Liliana Part 2. Warping Whale is going to... Mm. Yeah, so this getting up to 7 is a good deal for me, obviously. I get to Liliana this Tireless Tracker. I have two Matter Reshapers. I get to make a Warping Whale token a block if I have to. Like, they're going to have to kind of run through the gamut here. In order to... Yeah, they're gonna have to kind of go through it here in order to be able to do any damage to this Lily, just because of the two matter reshapers. Like, even if they kill them, there's still a chance that I flip over a creature or a removal spell. Oh, wow. All right, well, warp Warping Whale is uh, working out this time. Yep, they're going to try a clue. They got to find a Fatal Push or a Grasp here. And even then, they're kind of just praying, right? They're kind of just praying for, like, land, Fatal Push, or Grasp at this point. Because Liliana's ultimate has to win this game. Especially when I have a backup Liliana. Yeah, I mean... That's not going to do anything. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's spin the wheel here. Fatal Push in my hand, Warping Whale in my hand, and we win that game. All right, Liliana Ultimate. Just what we talked about before, uh, using Liliana as a threat more than a value walker, and we just won that match. All right, well, I will see everybody for uh, match number two. Apparently, they didn't want any part of that Black Eldrazi matchup. Uh, just to talk about this for a minute, where I think this deck really, really, really shines is in that Black, is in like the Green, Black, and Zombies matchups. I mean, we have a lot of the same engines that they do, right? So the green-black matchup uh, is all about using synergy to make their creatures bigger than your opponents, and then sometimes combo finishing them with Walking Blista, but most of the time just like Virtuous Gear Hulk, uh, Long Tusk Cub making them huge. What we're able to do is we're able to take away all that synergy with cards like uh, Gifted Aetherborn and Fatal Push. Like, you're going to put all this time, investment, uh, resources into making your Long Tusk Cup huge. We're just going to use a one-mana spell or a two-mana spell is going to block in order to fix it. Also, if you want to get through our defenses, if you want to get through our Thought Not Seers and Matter Reshapers, you're going to pay the price. You're going to give us a two, a two for one. And because we have such affordable answers, and so many answers, we're usually going to be able to win. Now, the places it gets tricky are like the team or energy matchup, where they have very diverse threats, right? They have Bristling Hydras that you need to kill with Doom Falls, but we don't have those. And then they have, you know, Glory Bringers, which you have to kill with Grass of Darkness. We have some of those. And then they have Whirler Virtuosos, which you either have to kill that by countering it, which you don't have, or kill the tokens, which we can sometimes do, like... There's a variety of threats in a deck like that, but zombies and green black are straightforward enough that we can usually outvalue them. Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for round number two coming up next.